Hello and welcome to the Today's Homeowner Weekly Podcast. We're here to help you with the challenges we all face as homeowners. I'm Danny Lifford. And I'm Joe Truini. And each week, Danny and I are here on the podcast to answer any and all home improvement questions. And we want to hear from you. Send us your questions or comments at todayshomeowner.com slash podcast. Okay, Danny, let's get started. Today's Homeowner Podcast is brought to you by The Home Depot. More saving, more doing. This week we'll give you a number of ideas on how to improve the look of that small concrete patio you may have in your backyard. We were talking to one of our listeners about uh, a patio they have that um, they had some ceramic, they removed it and it left pretty unsightly look to it. Several different ways that she can make it look better and along the way we'll be able to share with you a few things that you can use if you have that same situation. Yeah, when you first look at a concrete patio like that, it's like, oh my what do I need to do? Chop out the whole thing? And the answer is no, you don't have to. And we have a, <laughs> there are a whole bunch of ideas, so we'll share some of those. We also have a, um, a homeowner has a shed that's experiencing some rotted wood siding down along the bottom edge where it's got water splashed up on it. So we're going to give them an idea how to replace that so it won't have that problem happening again. And that's the same type of method that you would use to repair if you have a house that has vertical siding and that's you're right. having some problems right at the bottom and you're looking at it and going, do I have to replace the whole sheet of siding in order to make this look right? Well, not unless it's really bad. We've got a great solution that uh, I've used many, many times. And to tell you the truth, it ends up making the house look even better. We'll share that with you. And also, we have a real unique phone call coming up. It happens to be Joe Tr- Truini's son, Chris, who happens to be in Moscow, Russia. What is he doing in Moscow, Russia? We'll talk about that and talk about the differences in housing. And hey, can you go down to the local hardware store? And what about, what's just, what's different about living there and living in Connecticut? It's a very interesting call that I'm glad we're able to share with you. Yeah, I have visited Chris in Russia and in, in Moscow and everything is different. I can tell you that much. <laughs> um, and we're all, I'm also going to share a simple solution. It's a painting tip using plastic wrap instead of tarps. So stay tuned. It's a great idea. Yeah, I like this, and I I like it, and it'll make so much sense to you. Like all of Joe's simple solutions. All right, well, let's get started. Hey, let's see if we can help a great homeowner out here. Susie's in Virginia and has a question about a little concrete patio. Thank you, and hello. Hello. So to kind of make this really brief, um, I have a very small concrete concrete patio mm-hmm. that previously had ceramic tile on it for a number of years mm-hmm. before I bought the house. And um, with everything that um, we tried, can't get all of the thin set off of the aggregate. Mm-hmm. And so I'm wondering the best way to repair it that's pretty efficient. It's very small. And... Um, it's surrounded on three sides by the house and the fourth on the railing. The best way to get it looking decent again. Oh, um, I've thought, I saw on your show last Saturday morning uh, a quick creep resurfacer, which to me felt very fairly messy. I've also thought about the concrete, the little, t- the composite tiles that sort of put together. So would love to get your expertise on it. Okay, sure. And we know exactly what you're talking about when you remove any kind of ceramic, whether it's inside or out, and that thin set that they've put down with a grooved trowel, a notched trowel and you have all Mm -hmm. those little lines there and boy it really soaks into that concrete it's hard to to make it um turn loose um you know one of the floor scrapers a manual floor scraper that has a blade on it that's about five or six inches wide a lot of times it will at least knock the top off of it a little bit but um and then you know of course you're talking about a smaller patio might not be worth getting one of the uh, rental tools, uh, the the rental sanders, because there's, there's one that has the pumice rock on the bottom of it, has three or four rocks on it. I mean, it's quite a machine, and you put it on there, and it will grind it down completely smooth. Um, it's a pretty aggressive machine and very heavy, so you would certainly have to have a little help transporting it uh, to your place to get it, but I guarantee you, in, in an hour or less, that will make the entire patio as smooth as can be. Um, they're kind of expensive. I don't know. I hadn't rented one in a while. But, uh, Joe, you've used one of those things with those rocks yep. on the bottom of it, haven't you? Yeah, they're probably like 70 to $90 a day. But, Susie, um, just backing up one step, what is it that you want to eventually do with this 
patio if you were able to and i was going to suggest the same thing it's just grind you're gonna it's not a very pleasant job it's not a very clean job but the easiest way to get off that thin side is grind it off but if it's if you're going to be going over it with something like um you know recap which is a resurfacer you might be able to leave it in place and just go right over as long as the mortar is soundly stuck down you know you want it to be loose um so what what is the ultimate surface you want a nice clean concrete surface or you want to go over it with something else well, I want what I want it to look like is, is a semblance of something that somebody can walk on, and it's not unsightly. <laughs> okay. I'm, I'm pretty agnostic to what the floor surface actually looks like. At the very right. edge, there's a little bit of the original aggregate left, but right. um, you know, I'm I, I'm really pretty agnostic about it. It just looks yep. pretty unsightly now, and right. in places, and it's uneven. So some places, it's it's kind of less comfortable to walk on than other places. Un- uncomfortable meaning it's like rougher. Yes. Yeah. Well, I, I mean, you could grind it down with a, just a, a portable power tool, you know, like a, 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 a angle grinder with, you know, so you don't have to rent a big machine, but you have to get down on your hands and knees. This is a relatively small patio, right? So that wouldn't really take that long um, if you wanted to do that and then go over it with a re- recap or something like that. I mean, you could also, you know, smooth it out and tile over it, but do it a, a better job. And I would recommend, you know, smoothing it out as much as you can, putting down, um, a waterproofer, like Red Guard, some exterior waterproofer. You basically liquid rubber, and then go over it with, with uh, exterior grade thin set and exterior grade porcelain tile. I mean, that's a lot of work, and even with a small patio, it's a you know probably be a little expensive. You can go over it with wood. You can go over it with you know uh, plastic tiles that snap together. But I think I would try grinding it down as smooth as you can get it, and floating a new um, concrete resurfacer over the whole thing. And when you're done, it'll look like a brand new concrete surface. Susie, why don't you try this too? Why don't you take a good close-up picture of it and then head down, you know, many of the Home Depots have the rental centers there and just say what you're trying to do. And that way um, they may suggest something that's a little more manageable in terms of one of the machines they have available there uh, that you can um, sand it down. And that's, that's what I would try just to see what happens with that. You may end up with an area that's smooth enough that all you have to do is apply some concrete stain. So that would be the first approach that I would try and see if you can just cut all of that down, make it smooth enough that you can put a concrete stain. You can find a lot about that information at quickcrete.com as well. Same guys that have the recap. And uh, that might that might make for a, a beautiful patio and that will definitely be your least expensive route. Okay, super. Well, listen, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Hey. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, I probably will go down to Home Depot and see what they have to say. Good. Uh, so I appreciate you guys, and you have you all have a wonderful weekend. Okay, you as Thank well, you. Susie. Thank you very much. Hey, it's time for our best new product of the week, brought to you by the Home Depot. More saving, more doing. You know, for some, mowing the lawn can be therapeutic. For others, it's a time-consuming chore. Whether you're trying to get it over with or just trying to enjoy the outdoors, you shouldn't have to struggle with the mower itself. Troy Built has eliminated that concern with their Honda Gas walk behind push mower with high reel wheels and three in one tri-action cutting system. The mower features a rake bumper that lifts the grass upright to ensure that it's all cut evenly. It also has a specifically designed blade for finer mulching. That means less clumping which is unsightly and pretty bad for your lawn. The Honda engine features an automatic choke release which prevents flooding and get this, the mower is fully assembled inside the box. You just take it out, unfold the handle and well, you're ready to mow. Now for more information on this Troy Belt Walk Behind Push Mower, just log on to Home Depot. Dot com. Right now, people are struggling with their mowers. Hopefully, you did yeah. the what you're supposed to do when you put your mower up for right. the season. And all I'm of one of those that. people who think mowing the lawn is therapeutic. I love it. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you what. Uh, the the instant gratification you get out of something like that right. that makes it very very nice. And uh, uh, when I get my my house finished and I have that acre of of, of grass uh, for my wife to mow, um, I'm gonna, <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna have to get one of those zero turn mowers and uh, make that a whole lot easier. You know, we answer questions and try to face challenges that homeowners have inside, outside, and coast to coast. Right now, let's head to California. Deb has a question about a table that's important to her. Deb, welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you. Hi there. Good, good, good. What, what's, Hi. what's going on here? Understand, first of all, talking about a beautiful teak table. That sounds pretty good. Oh, yeah. So we just bought this beautiful table for our 
deck. We uh, we live in Bell Canyon, California. We just moved back in due to the whole fires that kind of swept through our neighbor neighborhood, and we got to move back in, and we bought this beautiful teak table, and the first day we had it, we christened it and uh, had a meal outside with our family, and there seemed to be some oil from... I don't know, rice, I guess, that was spilled onto the table, um, but it even has watermarks on it uh, just from putting a glass. So I'm not sure if it's not sealed or whatnot, but we have all these little teeny spots and not sure how to get rid of them. Okay. All right. Well, certainly, first of all, we, we can't imagine what you had to go through with the fire out there. We were uh, we did an episode out um, above San Francisco um, last year, and I was just completely amazed at, um, just, just, just could not believe uh what type of uh, damage that that caused, and certainly in your area as well. So uh, you certainly sound like you have a great uh, positive attitude right now. Well, we were we were very lucky. We were we had ten houses on our street, and three had survived, and so we were we were very grateful and lucky. But the fire was right right up against our property, and wow. I don't know. Grace of God, it survived somehow, but uh, everybody took a toll, and we're all just trying to be positive, and nobody got hurt, and, you know, we'll rebuild, and everybody's got a good attitude. Boy, that is great. I mean, when 70% of the homes are damaged, that's, yeah, it's hard to... You, know, you realize how lucky you really were, but uh, we feel so bad for yeah. everybody out there. And I'm glad yeah. you guys are back on your feet and everything's okay. Thank you. Well, I'm glad Thank you. you. I'm Thank glad. You. I'm glad you could share that with us and also with our with our audience. Joe, what do you think about this teak table? First of all, Joe and I love wooden tables like this. That yeah, especially awesome. yeah, especially teak. Uh, Deb, and thanks for sending those photographs. First of all, I'm not familiar with Bell Canyon, but wow, that you've got a beautiful view off the back of your patio or deck or whatever that is. <laughs> So that is, that is really spectacular. It, yeah, yeah I, I'm not sure how much time I'd spend in the house, in the house with a view like that. But, I know um, this is our living room. <laughs> yeah, good for you. Well, um, thanks for sending those photographs because I clearly see that uh, you've got some oil stains on there. And teak is is a relatively hard wood, but it is like any wood um, porous, and it absorbed mm-hmm. that oil. All right. So now, what can you do about it? It doesn't have. It looks like it has no finish on it at all. Or if it does, it's a, it's a very light finish so um, that would prevent staining um but we could do is first you want to try to soak out absorb whatever stain is left now it's been there for a while so i don't know how much you're going to get out at this point but you could try Mm -hmm. like crushed kitty litter there's a product called barkeeper's friend which is kind of like a a comet that you can get at Mm -hmm. a hardware store um Mm -hmm. you could try that they do make floor hardwood floor cleaners that you could try Mm -hmm. but i think i would just try soaking out the stains aren't that bad and i think when you go Mm -hmm. back and oil this table and that's what i'm going to recommend not a varnish not a polyurethane nothing like that you don't want to seal this under a hard surface you want an oil finish and the oil finish i've used is from a company called watco Mm w-a-t-c-o and i think it's Mm -hmm. just called teak oil finish or something like that and you just you just rub it on you put it on a rug a rug on a rag or on a brush Mm -hmm. and brush it on let it soak in and now that's not going to hide the staining, but it might, the stains are there, there from the oil, but it might disguise them enough that you might not see them because you're putting oil on top of it. And you could try it uh-huh. in a small spot. And there are other, by the way, there are other um, exotic woods and hardwood oils you can check out as well at the local home center mm-hmm. or hardware store. But that's what I would recommend is just going over with a oil specifically designed for teak. Okay, great. And you think the, you said kitty litter would take it out? Yeah, something, you could crush it. Right, because kitty litter is an absorbent, right? So get clean uh-huh. kitty litter, crush it, you know, put it on the ground and crush it with a two by four or something, a little block or a brick, then sweep it up and just rub it onto that spot, leave it for overnight uh-huh. or whatever, and see if that uh-huh. absorbs. The barkeeper's friend might be a better option because it's a finer powder. I just thought of that. You know, I that's see. a little finer. Um, okay. And you could try one of those two ideas. Yeah. Try, we'll try anything. I mean, we wash it down with simple green and warm yep. water, and that's what we were told to do. And it just doesn't, it just keeps like anything we put on it, it just keeps staining it. Yeah. You know, right? the good thing, Deb, just water in it. Yeah, the good thing, Deb, is teak is extremely um, weather resistant and durable. That's mm-hmm. why they make boat decks out of it. So even if you have a little oil stain on it, I don't think that's the worst thing. Okay, great. All well, right. thank you so much. Hey, I our, appreciate it. Our pleasure, Deb. Good Best luck. of luck to you. Let us know if we can help you any other way. Thank you so much. Thank you. Tell you what, you know, it really is touching when someone takes the time to write us an email 
to compliment us on our show. I just uh, that gets me every sing every single week. We have a number of them, and I share them with everybody in the company, um, and uh, we really appreciate it. Matter of fact, I, I got Absolutely, one just yeah. a little while ago, and this one is from uh, Bolton, Massachusetts. Tom and Liz Wright. Hello, I just wanted to let you know how much my wife and I love your show. We purchased a brand new home last year and have gleaned many good ideas and tips from you and Joe. Keep up the great work, Tom and Liz. Hey, thank you guys. We appreciate Thanks. you sending uh, an email like that. And, uh, you know, we, we're working hard every single week and having a little fun, as you can tell. And, you know, a lot of times people will call our Today's Home on our hotline and uh, leave a recorded question, which is perfectly fine. Uh, we're not able to get back with with you, but we can answer some of those questions for you right now. Well, when I was pulling out my cookware up under my sink the other day, I noticed some sawdust like particles on my cookware and stuff. And I'm wondering if anything eating on my cabinet. And I was wondering, could you give me some tip or what could I spray my cabinet with or what could it be? Thank you. All right. Well, certainly we'll try to do that. And I know exactly what you're talking about. And I'll tell you what you're, what's happening there. You have a particle board countertop, which nothing wrong with that. It's probably a post form countertop that you buy at the home centers or any of the um, countertop shops. And what happens uh, after a while, for some reason, it does start to kind of deteriorate a little bit. And, you know, just movement of drawers and doors and just general um, putting pots and pans in and out of there. Uh, sawdust will kind of filter down there. The reason for that is it is not sealed in there. So here's what you can do. Pull everything out of there. It's time to reorganize that that area of your uh kitchen anyway, and then just wipe everything down, clean it out real well, then get a can of polyurethane spray. You, you, you know, if you can get it in a water-based solution, I would recommend that. Shake it up really good. Uh, probably put a little uh, mask on, a little ventil- um, you know, respirator mask. That's probably a good idea and some, and some glasses. And then just lightly spray all of the inside of your countertops. That will encapsulate all of that sawdust and prevent it from filtering down, and it'll cost you less than $5 to do it. Let's get another question here. I have a mobile home which has some severe damage to the outside metal, which pushes into the wall on the inside. I was trying to find out the easiest way to go about repairing that, fixing it, like where I would get the necessary supplies to match the outside metal siding. I listen to your show um, on iHeartRadio through various stations and I also listen to your podcast. Thank you. Have a great day. Oh, thank you very much. Appreciate you uh, tuning in. Um, yeah, that that's a little tricky. I mean, if it's damaged enough that it can't be repaired, then the only thing I could suggest is um, contact the manufacturer of the mobile home. People might not realize this, but the mobile homes have serial numbers printed on a little plate somewhere. If you can find that, call the manufacturer, give them that serial number, and see if parts are available for that particular model. Depending on how old it is, they might be able to sell you the, the metal sheets or siding whatever it is you have on the outside if that short of that you could try repairing them you know you can either put a little suction cup on them on the outside and yank them out to see if you can pop them back into place i mean i'd hate to recommend taking off whatever you have on the interior and doing it from that side i mean that's another option but i think before i did that i would contact the manufacturer and see <clears throat> excuse me see if you can get the part the replacement parts okay let's try another question i would like some information on how to get rid on your concrete, uh, it's the black mold. Okay. I'll tell you, you know, so many um, concrete driveways have problems with uh, mold and mildew forming on it. A lot of times it's in a shaded area that you have. And what the problem is, is a poor concrete, it's a very poor surface and rarely does anybody seal the concrete so that it prevents water from penetrating down in it. Now, it may go for 100 years and not have a problem with it, but you will have problems with mold and mildew on it in those shaded areas, just, just like a dry sponge out in the middle of the element. So, to prevent that from happening and being a problem, first of all, clean it very thoroughly, whether you use a pressure washer or you just use some of the oxygen bleach that we recommend so much. Get it really nice and clean. Allow it to dry. Then use a clear masonry sealer. Available at Quickrete, available at Home Depot. Get a clear masonry sealer, and it'll recommend on there that you can roll it, brush it, or the easiest way, put it in a pump-up garden sprayer, and then you can just 
put a coat on it. It's not going to change your concrete very much. It'll darken it just for a little while. But the thing is, is you can usually recoat that in about 30 minutes. So why not fill up that fill up that pump up sprayer and put three even coats on it? You'll see immediately the concrete looks better for a lot longer. You'll still have to clean it from time to time, but nowhere near as often. Let's get another question. I would like to know what is the best stuff to use to clean vinyl siding. Well, there's a lot of options available depending on how much siding you're cleaning. I mean, if you're doing a, I assume you're doing a whole house, then I would really recommend a pressure washer. And they make um, pressure washer concentrates specifically for house siding. Simple Green makes one. Um, Zep, Z-E-P makes one as well. And they're, they're, they're labeled as house and siding concentrate cleaners. Um, but if you want to just mix up a homemade solution, you can do a, you don't want to use anything abrasive, of course, um, but you can use about a 50-50 mix of water and white vinegar and just scrub it. TSP, you know, that you could just scrub with TSP as well, then rinse it off. But again, because if you're doing a whole house and you got a large surface, I would try a pressure washer with the correct concentrate. Just be sure to work up and down from the top down and spray at an angle down where you don't want to drive water up under the siding. Okay, let's go to the next question. Hey, hey Joe, before we go to the next question, did you, did, yeah. you hear, did you hear he was listening to the show in the background? Yeah, I did. Actually, so, so we I, got, thought, I thought it was in my headset. Yeah, that's some immediate me. action right there. <laughs> let's go. Maybe he thought it was live. That, like, yeah, that instant, is. Instant content. That is our that's today's right. homeowner audience we love. Let's get another question. <laughs> I have the master bathroom, which is very small, and then I have a bathroom right next to that that's bigger. My husband and I were thinking about combining those two to make it a big master bathroom. Any suggestions? I would appreciate it. That sounds it. great. Okay. All right. Certainly can. Uh, and I've done that many, many times in trying to get, you know, get getting some of those walls and those, you know, compartments that we had in older houses out of there and make for a larger area. I would caution you, though, it's um, if you're planning on selling the house, it may uh, cause a little drop in value by not having, uh, by eliminating that extra bathroom. Certainly having a master bathroom, a nice master bathroom is a nice plus when you're selling a home, but you'll have to really weigh that carefully and it can be a sizable job because you're affecting your walls your ceiling your floor a lot of work there that needs to be done you might want to consult with an experienced remodeling contractor to see if they can help you out we're going to grab one more question here my problem is i had a renter and they let their cat urinate all over the oak hardwood floors that i had and they are a mess and the whole house stinks. Do you have a solution for this? That is a terrible problem and, a, and very difficult to get rid of. Um, and the success of cleaning it off and getting rid of the smell will depend on how well the wood is sealed under with polyurethane or whatever the top coat finishes. Because if the wood isn't sealed properly, of course, more of the urine would soak in than if it wasn't. So, I mean, there are a lot of things you can try. You can start with a 50-50 mix of either ammonia and water or white vinegar and water. Ammonia is usually the first thing you try because it, it cuts through that, the urine of, of the cat in this case. Um, Clorox makes a urine, a urine remover for stains and odor, so you could try that as well. Um, but again... I've had varying levels of success, again, depending on how far it's soaked into the wood itself. Yeah, that is a tricky one there. We do get calls a lot uh, along those lines. There's a lot of uh, different um, chemicals that are out there to help out. But um, a lot of times it uh, has to do with uh, ventilating the house as much as possible and really using those fans to move the air and just keep treating it and keep treating it. You know, it's it's amazing these days with uh, the podcasting that's been so successful for us, and and having the internet that you never know. I mean, we're getting we we get calls and contacts from people all over the world asking questions. And Joe, I think it's very very interesting what you were sharing with us. Uh, I think it was last week on the show yeah. where uh, you uh, contacted your son. I might I might step back and say that um, Joe has a son and a daughter, and they have led quite the adventurous life and being able to travel and live all over the world in different places. Great experiences there. But Joe, I understand you talked to Chris the other day right. in Moscow. You're checking up on him to make sure he was <laughs> yeah, doing okay. Right. What was he doing when you called? Yeah, my son Christopher has been living in Moscow, Moscow for quite a while, studying and working. And I called him and he said, hey, dad, guess what I'm doing? And I'm like, I don't know. Well, guess what I'm listening to? I had no idea. He was listening to today's homeowner in Moscow. 
Oh. So isn't that guy? He said he loves the advice Danny gives all the time. Yeah. Like, hey, wait a minute. <laughs> what, about, what about about me? I know it. <laughs> well, we're 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 so happy, and I thought it would be so cool, a great idea to have Chris on with us right now from Moscow, Russia. Chris, welcome to the show. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure to be on. Uh, like my dad said, I'm a big fan. I mean, I know it's easy to say, uh, considering my dad's on, but I think, like many people listening, I find it very comforting. I really do. Oh, good. Uh, well, you know, when we started talking about it, I mean, first of all, it, it, it's it's so neat and amazing these days of how you can, you know, get online and you can uh, really explore a lot of things. And I'm sure you get homesick from time to time. So hearing some familiar voices is, is always good. But I'll tell you what I think um, our listeners would find intriguing is just a little bit of comparison. I mean, no, you know, when you think of Moscow, if you haven't been there, I haven't been there. You just have this, I guess, this vision of these old buildings and these different things there. But what are some of the things, I mean, because you move from a wonderful uh, rural setting there in Roxbury, Connecticut, to Moscow, what's different about it? Well, just about everything, as you might imagine. <laughs> um, it's a city of about 12 million people, so that alone is Whoa. pretty uh, wow. shocking, first come, just the, the expanse of it. Um, and um, I'd say like a lot of uh, winter cities in Northern America, uh, you know, there's kind of two seasons, like construction and winter. <laughs> uh, <laughs> now that the, the weather has finally gotten nice, basically all the sidewalks are getting redone. And, you know, there's a lot of work being done now that it's finally warm enough to work. Um, and, um, yeah, it's a, it's a beautiful city. It's really big, wide streets and um, it's, it's gorgeous. And it's definitely a modern city, man. It doesn't feel like some, uh, you know, old, uh, antiquated place. Yeah. Chris, um, m- my wife, Marla and I were, were thrilled to be able to visit Chris in Moscow. Actually, we spent Thanksgiving with you in Moscow oh, a few cool. years ago. And yeah. it is quite an amazing city. I- I've traveled quite a bit and I've never seen any place quite like Moscow, but, um, Chris, now, you know, here we deal with, um, callers who always have questions about their homes and, they're, you know, they go to Home Depot and they're looking for something. Is there anything equivalent to that in Moscow or, or at least in Russia, like outside of Moscow? Do you, have you been to any of the hardware stores or home centers like a Home Depot kind of thing? Do you see people walking yeah, around with, yeah. with lumber and sheetrock and that kind of thing? Yeah, sure. Yeah, well, they have, um, they have OB, OBI, which is a, it's actually a European chain. They have that in Italy also. Um, right. And that's functionally basically the same as a Home Depot. And then they also have a place called Merlin that's like, something between a Home Depot and a Walmart. It's like a huge, huge store that just sells like just about everything you could possibly imagine. And they have a lot of home goods as well and uh, yeah. stuff you'd need for, for doing work on the house. Well, yeah. Chris, well, what when, about... when we last spoke, mm-hmm. Christopher, um, the thing about um, Moscow is it's a super efficient city. I mean, the Russians are very serious about everything. And I, I love that, you know, because everything's super efficient. Everything runs. There's a, the subway system, the metro is amazing. A train runs like every 90 seconds, I think it is, Chris. And I yeah, lived in New York really, City, true. so I know what that's about. But um, tell Danny and our audience about the uh, escalators. Oh, sure, yeah. Well, all the metro, I mean, Moscow has a river running through it, but it's not close to the water or anything, so it's pretty much just sitting on bedrock. And mm-hmm. all the metros dug super, especially in the center, are dug super, super deep underground. Um, and unlike, I mean, in like D.C., that's true as well, but typically you'll have like a run of escalator and then a little landing and then another run or a turn and then another run. Um, but here they just have right. one escalator straight shot all the way down. And uh, the stairs are numbered, I guess, for repairs or whatever they need to do. And uh, I finally saw the the last step, and it was something like 550 steps. So at any time, there's like almost a stair continuous run. Uh, yeah, it's really stunning. The first time you walk, yeah, I think they built them to be. Um, I think they built them to be bomb shelters. That's why they're so deep. Absolutely, absolutely. Well, Chris, this has been real interesting. I'm glad you were able to 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 peel yourself away from the hard studying that you do each and every day. So <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> to to be with us, but thanks so much for being with us. And we uh, certainly uh, we'll have to do this again. It's a lot of fun and great to hear your voice. And take care and best of luck yeah, to you on you. everything there. Thank you, thank you. It's great to be on the show. And like I said, I'm a big fan, so I'll All be right. listening to you again. 
All right. <laughs> that sounds great. Thanks, Chris. Chris, Chris Truini from Moscow, Russia. We don't do that every week. And like I say, you never know no, what's going to <laughs> pop up here. <laughs> we always have a whole lot of fun sharing with you a lot of different ideas. Hopefully, we're able to provide you a lot of solutions to some of the challenges you have as a homeowner. We all, anybody that has a home almost every day or every week, you have a little something that challenges a little bit. So many times, it's just a minor thing. If you know how to approach approach it, it's fairly easy to take care of. And that's what we love to be able to provide. And we have a, we have a caller right now, Mark's in Pennsylvania, with a with a little challenge on his storage building out back. Mark, welcome to the show. Thank you. Tell us all about it here. I know um, you sent us some pictures, which is showing a condition of something that we've seen quite a bit. But tell us what's going on there, Mark. Well, I'm just trying to get that figured out. I have that wood siding. It's a T111, and it's just bubbling up and uh, splitting, and I just want to replace that. And What's going to be the best way to do that? Okay. Well, so many times when you have siding like this, um, you know, the backsplash where the water's hitting and it's splashing up and it almost uh, almost wicks up into the wood because so rarely does anybody seal the bottom of siding like they should. You know, when I have a situation like this, whether it's a storage building or on a home, I always require the painters to go along with some caulking in their hands. They don't have to, you know, lay, lay on the ground, but put a little caulking on the fingers and seal off the pores of that siding and then certainly following that up with a coat of paint just basically seals up that very vulnerable area. Um, you know, you paint the rest of it, you caulk the rest of it, why not do the very bottom of it where the moisture can come in? And that's what's happened here. But I think from looking at the pictures, this is actually not a wood siding, but is a masonite. Well, I use masonite, but as a brand name, but hardboard siding that has... Um, kind of fiber inside, and then it has a coating of it. Still, you know, very prone to the water damage that we have here. And Joe, you know, in, in the, um, uh, my buddy Joe here's uh, um, written a, just an unbelievable um, storage, uh, a shed book that was very, very successful. And, and I'm sure in the book, Joe, you had to approach this kind of common problem. Yeah, Mark, I actually built a storage shed for my first shed book here on my property, and I used T111. For, and for Listeners who aren't familiar, T111 is just a common name. It's it's a plywood siding that Georgia Pacific makes. It's an exterior grade plywood siding that typically has grooves in it. So regardless of whether this is plywood or hardboard, as Danny is is guessing, you know you've got to cut it out, right? Because the bottom ends of these panels are like sponges, and if they're not caulked or stained really well, as Danny mentioned, it's going to suck up water. And I notice you do have a drip edge flashing there. Now that flashing. If it's not pointing down at a pretty severe angle, water will sit on it, and then you're basically just asking for trouble, and you can see it rotted to wood and blistered to paint. So what I would do, I mean, you could replace the whole thing, but what I would do is cut off the bottom, whatever it is, six or eight inches to get up to sound wood, Mark, and then put in Azek. You know what Azek is? It's, um, mm -hmm. it's cellular PVC. It's essentially plastic lumber. They use it for house trim. Are you okay. familiar with that? How did you spell that again? It's um, A-Z-E-K. Okay. And Home Depot sells it, and Home Depot also has a house brand called Veranda, which um, is a similar product. It's actually a little less expensive, um, but it's either Veranda or Azek, and it's just plastic, and it has it comes white and it's often smooth on one side, has wood grain on the other. But the idea is, you and if you can get your saw in there, I would actually run it, set the bevel so you're cutting up a little bit. This isn't absolutely necessary, but if you cut it up a little bit, then you can tuck the side the um, board up underneath it. And, mm, and of course, okay. you have to caulk that and flash it, and you want it to to shed water. There's and you'll, you'll, you'll use a little little flashing it. called Z metal. Um, you, right. You'll want to use goes Z metal between the that, underside of the wood and the top. Right. It'll tuck under the, the siding basic. and then go over. And you can use the plastic. Where is it? Cellular PVC that Joe's mentioned is great, but also there's composite material uh, that's um, readily available now at any of the home centers, any of the lumber yards um, that you can use. But as he mentioned, just go up six or eight inches, cut all the excess out tuck that under it, and then make sure you caulk it well so that no other water wicks up into the newly cut area. And, and you know, and, and to tell you the truth, Mark, it, it kind of makes it look good. I mean, it you know, having the little right. skirt feature like that, well, uh, you'll end up with a positive effect over having to repair this damaged wood. All righty. 
And we Mark, I'll make one that. of the suggestion. Mark, I'll make one uh-huh. of the suggestions since you live in Pennsylvania. I'm here in Connecticut and I've had this problem. If snow piles up against that and goes up higher than that plastic lumber, that Azek, it's going to rot the wood out. You know, so so try to if you can, you know, I usually just shovel or brush the snow off, you know, down below of where the wood is because it will you don't want it sitting in the snow and then snow melts becomes water and you you have the same problem okay. 6 or 8 inches up higher. Yeah, I could see where the snow may have been my problem because I was okay. I I thought, you know, I'm 3 or 4 inches off the ground, so I wasn't going to get anything wicking up under that ground, but uh maybe it was the snow, snow probably or did it. Yeah. Other things. All right. I'm going to have to move to Florida then. <laughs> there you go. There you go, Mark. Well, hopefully been able to help you with this and I'll be able to solve that problem. And you're catching it at a good time. This is something that we've had to do anytime you have that siding that's down. Some people will say you have to replace it all. Here's a good alternative that will end up looking better and save you a little Mark bit. Mark will of be calling money. us from Florida with a termite question. Yeah, that's years. right. That's right. I want to remind you, you can pick up the phone anytime and give us a call. 800-946-4420 is our 24-hour-a-day, seven day a week hotline. The Today's Summoner hotline allows you to leave any type of question, comment, or maybe you have a tip that's worked well for you, share them with us. How about an email? We love emails, and you can send us one through our website at todayshomeowner.com slash ask. While you're there, you may want to do a little binge watching, especially our Simple Solution video series. We have almost 500 of those videos waiting on you from those simple solutions to some of the problems you have around your home. And you can get to those by going to todayshomeowner.com slash simple solutions. And we're going to bring you a fresh one right now from my buddy Joe Truini. Okay, Danny, I was doing some interior painting recently. It was actually in a bathroom, and I used a simple solution that I had presented on the TV show a couple of years ago, and I thought, and it worked great, so I thought I'd share it with our radio audience. It's how to protect surfaces from paint spatters, um, which are inevitable when you're using a roller particularly, and what you're going to use is some, um, it's adhesive back plastic food wrap. You can, I didn't even know this stuff existed, but it's hmm. been around for a while when I first discovered it a few years ago. Glad makes one, and it's called Press and Seal. And it's just nothing more than plastic like saran wrap. It has a very um, quick-release adhesive on one side. So the idea is you pull out a big old sheet of it, and you snap it off, and you wrap the top of your toilet, your vanity sink. You, know, you can actually slip it, because it's super thin, of course, slip it behind the toilet. Mm-hmm. Some toilets are backed away from the wall a little bit, the tank, and you can get in there with a brush or a little trim roller. But anyway, the idea is you just take this and you stick it down. Unlike um, a tarp that slides out of the place or... And you can make it custom fit any size, anything. So anyway, so that's the simple solution. Peel off a piece, stick it down, then paint. And when you're done, you just peel it right off and toss it away. There oh, you go. that's a great way to go. And there's so many uh, situations like that. You know, that's a great situation when you think about the toilet or some of those areas that, boy, a drop cloth right. just doesn't do it. I mean, you take a drop cloth, it's just too thick to try to too wrap big. around yeah. it and that kind of thing. You know, which, 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 um, you know, real quick, I can tell you, we... Think of this situation. All right, we have about 30 right. drop cloths that we use in, in the TV show. We have drop cloths everywhere all the time. Well, after a year, sometimes they get a little wet. Sometimes you get a – these drop cloths need to be cleaned. So right. Monday morning, we're sending uh, one of our producers up to the laundromat with several right. rolls of quarters, <laughs> and he's going to pack oh, – wow. he's going to Take over the laundry mat, fill it up. So yeah. if you're if you're uh, washing clothes anywhere near our headquarters in Mobile, Alabama, you may want to um, uh, avoid that because we have taken over the laundry mat right. to wash our clothes. So well, that's <laughs> or smart to wash because the drop cloths. <laughs> yeah, that's smart because whenever you're washing anything really big like that and heavy, you don't want to put that strain no. on your washing machine, I know it. right? So I know it. You go to an industrial machine and you know they're they're designed to handle stuff like exactly. that. Exactly. So, that's so <laughs> someone that's their job. Washing, that's their job. They don't know who it is. Drying, yeah, they don't know which one tarps. will be will be chosen yet but uh you know he's the lucky one and you can meet a lot of you know new friends there as you're hanging out maybe when sharon gets done mowing the lawn she'll go there and uh, wash oh i'll let you good luck with that i'll let you call her on that one Well, now it's time for our podcast question of the week. And, of course, we always encourage you to send us a question anytime. And we really appreciate everybody sending the questions in. All you have to do is go to todayshomeowner.com slash podcast. This week, Mary asked, I have a vinyl wood 
plank floor that cracks and creaks when we walk on it? Is there a remedy other than taking it all up and replacing it with something else? Joe, I guess, you know, it's just not, fa- it's just the glue is not holding the fasteners that may be right. used on this particular type is not holding down. Of course, they say vinyl oh, and right. wood. So I was going to ask you, what do you think that is? Vinyl wood, like laminate, or is it well, vinyl I plank think, that I think just look like yeah, wood? I think it's vinyl plank that looks like wood. Oh, okay. Yeah. So you know, there's that, that's gone through a lot of uh, changes over the over the few years that it's been out on the market because um, sometimes it had a peel and stick type approach to it. Right. That you just peeled yeah. off the back, suck it to the uh, floor. More often now, the last few we've installed actually had a glue that you put down with the smallest little notches on a notch trial because you know a lot of the the notch trial adhesive applications will be a little thicker. This is just like such a small amount. I mean, yeah, about a gallon, sixteenth of an inch. Yeah, yeah. I mean. A a gallon of glue will cover, I don't know, two acres. You know, it, it, it really <laughs> goes a long, long way. But um, I would have to think on this, the first thing I think about is that that the glue had already started um, drying up before the material actually was put down. Because they tell right. you a lot of times to walk, uh, to work in small areas at a time. And that's the reason that would be what I would guess. What's your thoughts? Yeah, she said the floor cracks. I'm not sure if she's talking about creaking or like actual cracking and is it the subfloor? It could I mean, be the subfloor. It could be the wood subfloor yeah. there. If it's a wood subfloor, it's concrete, then it's not the subfloor. So, and I'm also not sure if this is happening everywhere or one place. Usually when you hear creaking or cracking, it's just in isolated areas, and then you can address those. But yeah, if this was glued down, again, maybe this the glue skinned over is the term when it right. starts to That's right. it starts to dry out a little bit. And then, of course, when you go to put down the plank, it doesn't really stick because it's, this, it's got a little bit of a skin as, as formed on top of the glue. But what can she do? Mary wants to know, what can I do at this point besides taking it up? And I'm at a loss here. I'm not really sure what she could do. I guess, you well, know, I'll, I'll short you, of yeah. taking it up, mm-hmm. um, you know, I don't, I don't really have any other, without getting a, more information from her, yeah. I'm not sure what to tell her. A couple of things. Um, one, if you can really isolate it, if it's all over the place, no, there's nothing you can do but take it right. up to prevent that. Um, but if it if it's isolated in just a few places, then, uh, and of course, it's all contingent upon having some of the material, but remove the the problem areas, re-glue it, make sure you use the right glue, the right notch trial, put it back down, weight it down really good with some books or something to really let it dry overnight, that should solve the problem. A more temporary fix is the same thing that we recommend. And boy, we have recommended this and we've gotten a lot of emails saying it worked. And that is taking baby powder, talcum powder, and putting it on the floor. Yes, it'll be a bit of a mess for a little while. Take a slightly damp rag and work it into the grooves. If if the um, cause of the sound when you're walking on it are the two pieces of vinyl rubbing together, that will silence it for a little while. Not a permanent fix, but that'll solve a problem for you for a little while until you can uh, figure out exactly what you want to do. But that's a tough one, and uh, we're, we're, we're okay with tough questions and encourage you to send us one anytime at todayshomeowner.com slash podcast. We also really appreciate the great reviews we've gotten. We picked up a number of five-star reviews this week on our podcast. We really appreciate it. And the reason we mention that is that's how we get more people to listen to our podcast. It's a, you know, podcasts are everywhere now, a lot of choices on it. For us to rise to the top like we like to do, the reviews is the way to go. So we appreciate all of those. Encourage you to do the same. Well, that pretty much wraps it up for this week. And I certainly uh, would encourage you, if you have a question, answer, or any comment that we can help you with, go to todayshomeowner.com slash podcast and let us hear from you. I'm Danny Lippert along with Joe Truini. Thanks so much for being with us on this podcast and tune in next week for our next one.